So I started in 2015 around August or September in Netherlands. Hello everyone. This is Chikun streaming from Sambit PhD. This is my first appearance I know. So my question is for Sambit so you have been living here in netherlands for more than three years and many people have already been asking so that's why the question is how did you uh, end up in your phd position which you are now just describe it very briefly don't make it too long and boring okay i hear you so that's a good question chikun like this video uh, subscribe to the channel share the channel and Give your questions in the comments so that I can address them in future. So let's cut short to the chase. So I started in 2015 around August or September in Netherlands for doing a master's and uh, first in master's the main thing is within one year you need to figure out which research group you want to work with and in the second year almost to after the end of the first quarter like in the last nine months of the second year that's what we had in computer science in Pew Delft where I did my masters so you basically do like a thesis which is like a short research for approximately less than one year duration uh, which varies from faculty to faculty maybe six months nine months generally it's like that and sometimes also people having 60 ECTS so it's like 15 ECTS each quarter so if you have 45 ECTS which was our case it's only nine months and if you cover 60 ECTS then it's like one year so during that time you need to complete your thesis and some people manage it and some people who are maybe they have some other situations or external circumstances they might not be able to so let's cut short to the chase uh, so the thing is that in my case I completed it in nine months and basically I tried to complete all the subjects during my first year, all the courses that I need to do and I gave more than nine months to my thesis although ideally you should give nine months and what happened was I could get plenty of time for doing my thesis and at that time I had made up my mind that I'm going to join this research group which I joined in computer science web information systems in Tew Delft but I didn't have a real idea of what I'm going to do in the thesis like what will be my research topic and which areas I'm going to work and what research is going to match my programming expertise and there are many other considerations that come up to your mind and you always get them. So that thing it might sound very surprising but that was like by accident uh, I got, I knew my, I mean, which group I'll go to work, but I was not sure about the topic. So by accident, uh, one of the supervisors, uh, he suggested me that uh, they have a new PhD from Switzerland who has built a, a educational support system, which you can use in the classroom to give live lectures, live presentations and also track the engagement level of each student and you can know what people are actually doing like watching the lectures or they are doing Facebook or certain kind of things. So it kind of spiked my, I mean it is computer science but this has some other components to it like human computer interaction and educational science which is like your motivation engagement and uh, that is the main term i'm not using it here because the crowd might not understand that's called learning analytics so analyzing the data about the learners like for the last six seven years it has become a huge thing at least in europe netherlands and i think also in us maybe slowly it will percolate to india so that's what the thing so the thesis that I got was completely opposite what I had in mind before. So before I joined UDEF, I had in mind that I'm going to do a thesis in the algorithms group because I was fond of algorithms. But then that's a big story. So I'm not going to go into it. It will be part of a separate video. But the somehow I went to this research group. I like their topics, but still 
getting this exact research which I'm doing because I was fascinated by the idea of working with external partners like a PhD from Switzerland and growing my network. So at the back of my head, my idea was that I will learn a lot of new things because I'm working with more external partners and other people. But still, I was not sure that whether I will be able to handle this new topic and other things because I didn't know this was just an accident. <laughs> Yeah, that happens like this is life. So that is the first instance. And then as I gave more time for my thesis, as I said before, so thesis is really, really important. If you plan to do a PhD after a master's, you should give very much emphasis on your thesis. If you're planning to do a job, doing a thesis go easy go normal it's fine but if you want to do a phd my advice is always try to publish at least one paper at least it's not mandatory it's not a hard and fast requirement but you should try to publish at least one paper try to understand the importance of it so that's what was my goal from right from the beginning although i was faced with many challenges during my thesis journey which I will make a separate web series. If people are interested, please comment below if you want to hear more about my transition from masters in first year to masters in second year doing the thesis and then transition to the PhD. So this thesis laid the foundation and I also managed to publish one research paper towards the end of my thesis. And that helped me to like understand the nitty and gritty requirements of scientific writing, critical thinking, analysis, and other kind of things. And I also uh, managed to learn a lot of new uh, languages and frameworks while working. Uh, that was because of the support that I got from the PhD from Switzerland because he was a very good software developer and he has built that system which I was using for my thesis. Although I, my contribution was like, 10, 5 or 10 percent, but still you learn a lot from a PhD who has been working for like four or five years. And a great thank you to also my supervisors, both supervisors in Delft. One was from Italy and one was from Germany. And they helped a lot to shape me initially. And uh, this foundation helped me when I applied for the PhD application. Come on, it's becoming very long and boring. Shut, shut it down. Fast, fast, fast. Come on, fast, 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 fast. Yes, I'm moving into the end. Please don't interrupt. Don't interrupt. So coming back to the point. So in my PhD, uh, generally people start applying for the PhD in this mid of the second year. That's what I did because you have like a buffer period of like five or six months. And within that time, you can easily keep on applying, keep on applying because you are not a great, I mean, unless you are someone very exceptional, you are not sure that you want, uh, you will get PhD in the first attempt. So keep in your mind always like tone down your expectations and keep in your mind like I will apply multiple times till I get accepted because there are multiple factors that come into play when you apply for a PhD. You might be a bright student, but the project requirements might not align with what you want to uh, get, uh, what they want to get from you. So that's the reason like you should start applying early. So I spent almost like, I started applying in the mid of my second year. So I spent almost like two, three months. I had like 10 to 15 rejections. And then finally I got the PhD, which I, and that PhD application itself was also an accident. Yeah. So what happened was like in the advertisement here in Netherlands, if you want to find a PhD, then academic transfer is highly recommended to look for PhD positions inside Netherlands. So what I did was I was looking in academic transfer and I knew some of the people who are working in learning analytics because that was my research by that time I had built upon that on my thesis. And generally you try to find something which is matching the thesis work that I've spent for like one year, almost one year. And luckily I found those people who I was interested in following their work, their publications, but 
uh, I was not sure whether I was going to work under them. So in the advertisement, it was mentioned specifically that this position is not on the technology enhanced learning that I have been working, but you should have a psychology background, which was surprising, but still as they were part of the selection panel. So I thought, why not give it a try? I mean, if you give a try to something always, it doesn't cost you money, right? I mean, for applying, it doesn't cost you money. So why not give it a try? And that was also by accident. Like I give, I gave it a try. When they read my motivation letter of my PhD, they were surprised that I had a background in learning analytics. And one of my German supervisor from Tudor also knew one of the German supervisor, which I have now in here. So they both got in contact. That's a separate story. Uh, so the thing is that although it was psychology, but still I applied thinking at the back of my head that maybe they will read my application and they might invite for the interview. So it exactly happened like that. Although it took one month for them to respond. That also happens. You never know. Uh, they had a short interview in Skype and one of them, uh, the promoters, uh, which whom I wanted to work with, he was very impressed by the work and they invited for a campus interview at the end and then another person came into account, another professor. So, and I was so lucky that, I mean, in the interview, they, although they had mentioned psychology, but actually they said that it was just to, because they had more vacancies in the psychology faculty. So they thought as a university, psychology should be given more priority at that time, but it was not hard and fast. So as I was having a background in learning analytics, so they wanted to fit me in the computer science part or the educational science part where they had more research on technology enhanced learning, which I'm doing now with sensors and all kind of machine learning AI stuff. So that's my story. Like, uh, if you like my story, so please hit a thumbs up and I try to keep it as short as possible. And if you like my animation character Chikun, then please also hit a thumbs up. And I hope to see you throughout my journey and this channel will slowly grow as I'm doing a PhD. I'm very busy, so I cannot upload videos on a regular basis, but I'll try to give you a short glimpse so that you understand what it needs to stay in Netherlands and all kind of stuff and also related to my PhD via weekly vlogs and this kind of informative videos. So keep watching and I hope that I will soon hit the 1K subscribers and then probably I will try to bring in more members and other kind of things. So keep watching and keep the, hit the thumbs up button and see you in the next video. Peace.